starting at the beginning, video three. Uh, this time we're going to introduce Rose Matter Genuine, and we're going to use it in opera, 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 <laughs> at the same time. So here is Rose Matter Genuine, and you'll notice, you know, one thing I love to observe is that because of the different pigments uh, have different chemical compositions, obviously, they behave very differently from each other. So part of um, our process here is to learn how a given pigment works. I find rose matter genuine tends to puddle more for whatever reason. It's also very light. Um, it doesn't stain, not stain, but it doesn't, it takes more pigment to really get a color. And you can only get so much, even if you go pretty goopy like I'm doing here. It doesn't have the denseness that cobalt and even aurelian have. So I'm doing the same thing with rose matter that I did with aurelian and cobalt blue. Now these have dried too, so I'm going to take my experimenting a step further, which is glazing rose matter over cobalt to look what that looks like. And glazing means a thin coat of paint over a surface. Look at that purple. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Think of what you could use that for. Now, let's take a look at what would happen. Another thing to play with with this now that we're getting more colors is the difference between glazing a color on top of a wet color and on top of a dark color and what does it mean to mix the colors on your palette, which I'm going to do here. How does this look different from glazing? Completely different, isn't it? So another tool we have. Isn't that exciting? I think it's exciting. So really observe. What's the difference between these to your eye? And when would you want to use one versus the other? Which, of course, is... You know, what we have to decide, and that becomes our artistic sense and our aesthetics and why my work will be different from someone else's work is those choices we make and what we will use. I mean, let's face it, a poppy has been painted a billion quadrillion times, but why does my poppy look different than someone else's poppy? And not that it's better or worse, I do not like superlatives when discussing art, so I don't I, I try to avoid using them because it isn't about one being better than another. It's not one tool is better than another. It's about the choices we make and if it works for what it is we're trying to say. So here I'm adding more of my mixed pigments. And let's see what happens when I add my, I wonder what this will do. If I take my mixed uh, cobalt and rose matter and add it to my glazed. That's getting pretty pretty dense there, isn't it? Can't see as much paper coming through. And we'll see what it does when it dries, of course. Now let's see what happens if we spray them. And I, by the way, it's become a fun thing. I collect different spray bottles because they all create different types of spray. And again, more tools. This is my one that tends to work the most frequently. Ooh, look at that. Look at look at the patterns being made in here. Oh, it's so So you don't really even have to paint an object. You can just paint the beauty of the paints. And just just enjoy the process of exploration. I'm a <laughs> big explorer. I'm I am not a destination person. You know how it, you can be destination, oh, I've got to go see this, or I've got to go there. I'm more, oh, let me walk out my door and see where I go. And that's how I approach my paintings, too. And so, two pigments, totally different results depending on how I use them. Um, so, again, you'll learn it just by playing with it.
So I got a little more blue on this side of the brush. That's the other thing you do. I learned this one studying Asian ink painting is charging the brush. Put a little more pigment on uh, rose matter here on that side. And then you can flip it. That's great for petals, flower petals. Okay. Now why don't we add one more step today. Um, oh, opera, I forgot the opera. Now look at the difference between opera. Oh, oof, got a little too pasty there, didn't I? Look at the difference between these two. Can you describe what the difference is? They're both a form of pink or red. Okay. Now, this rose matter has more, a little bit more of a bluish cast to it than this. And let me just get out, let my, I was going to wait and do warm and cool colors in a later video, but let's just touch on it now because it's a really important to th thing to start seeing with your eye. And that is, um, here I'm going to put three reds on here. This is a, a Windsor red. See how this one's more orange? And this one has a little more blue in it. And this one, of course, is a sort of pink. <laughs> um, colors have warmth and coolness to them. And that warmth and cool is relative to what it's around. So if I put this next to the blue, which is cooler, it will look warmer. But when I put this next to a warmer red, it looks cooler. And it's a hard one, I know. And it's taken me a long time to train my eyes to see that. And even my eyes disagree with other artists' eyes who will call something warmer than I see it is cooler. But warm and cool look at leaves for example that are more yellow versus some that are more blue and just see if you can start to see the difference between warm and cool um, and leaves is a good way to do it greens are a good way to do it because ha we have there are like right now we see a lot of more yellow greens um, than blue greens with spring i'm just making a mucky messes here but in any case because of the blue and the rose matter, if I wanted to make orange, and orange is the complement of blue, I'm going to get a grayer orange than if I mix it with opera. Does everyone know what complements mean in painting? So here, there, that's opera in a really in yellow, and then I have to clean my rose matter here. Here's my rose matter with Aurelian. Do you see how they're, this one is just not as lively as this one in terms of being orange? There are many uses for this, lots of uses for it, but it may not be that intense yellow setting sun that you want. To capture. So this this could be used for flesh color, for example. Rocks. Rocks and flesh are very similar in use of pigments, by the way. Just as an aside. Okay. So homework. <laughs> I should be giving you homework. I just thought about that. Play with these with all your pigments now. Play with the water. We'll work on brush stroke techniques in another video, so don't worry too much about that right now. But see what you can learn, and I hope you'll post some. I would like to see what you're doing. Play with ratio of pigment to water. I used as much pigment in here as I did here, but look at the intensity difference. That's because of the, op the opera is a much more intense pigment. And then the rose matter and 
Um, the other thing is to look outside, look at trees, see if you can see a warmer green versus a cooler green, a bluer green versus a yellower green, because we will be talking about warm and cool colors um, that will help us mix our colors as we're starting to do here. Okay, take care. Bye.